Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swagglehaas. I hope you all had an excellent weekend, but it is Monday, and that means it's time to look at GoCollect's hottest comics for the week. Now, I'm sure you'll notice that I don't have my camera on right now because I'm having a bit of technical difficulties, but that's okay. We still have a video. We still got to talk about the hottest comics, and it's a good thing that we are because we got a really interesting list this week. Now, for those who don't know, GoCollect puts out this weekly article, written, of course, by Matt Tuck, that analyzes the hottest selling comic books based on volume of sales and movement on eBay. So always really interesting to see what the market is buying. But before I get into the books, if you guys could drop me a like or comment or subscribe if you're enjoying the content, help support the channel, do one of those things, I would appreciate it. But enough of the setup, let us get into the number five book. And the number five book is actually gonna be Something is Killing the Children, number one, local comic shop day foil edition, up 976 spots. And what is the significance of this? Well, this of course is the first issue of the extremely popular Something is Killing the Children title released by Boom Studios. Of course, this is a book that is written by James Tinian and drawn by Weather Deladera. Uh, James T Tinian, of course, one of the all-time like hottest writers right now. It feels like everything that he does and touches absolutely explodes in the market, uh, and for good reason. I mean, like he's just an incredible uh, writer. His his craft is excellent, uh, and everything that he writes, like you know, I really enjoy. Uh, Something is Killing the Children uh, being included in that uh, discussion here. Uh, and of course, what do you guys say about this book? I mean, this is definitely the hottest book uh, I think that's existed in recent uh, you know, memory, at least in terms of like the indie titles that have been coming out. I mean, the prices that this book is selling for on the secondary market uh, are absolutely ridiculous. I mean, I don't know if these are prices uh, just because this is a book that everybody wants to have. Like maybe this is just the comic book collector's collector book, or are these prices being dictated based on speculation? You know, people thinking that, you know, this is going to be like this generation's Walking Dead uh, comic book. Still, with that being said, I mean, like people just absolutely love this thing. Now, of course, like many books in the modern era. This one has had many printings, and the particular issue that we're talking about, the local comic shop foil edition variant, I believe this is one that had been printed about a year after the initial book's uh, first launch. Uh, so interesting to see that this book has actually uh, been getting hot in the market, but it, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, this is just a series that is so popular that every single you know variation or every single printing is just going to be desired. Like Everybody wants to get their hands on this book, but because it is the local comic shop uh, version. Uh, you can see here the 9.8 selling around the $150 range, fair market value. And then down here at the bottom, you know, you're not going to see it slab. But typically speaking, now when you go onto eBay and you're looking for this thing, you know, I see it being sold around that $25, $30, $35 range or so. So uh, everybody's still wanting to get these, you know, uh, printings that come out later on. Everybody still loves this thing. Local comic shop foil variant is still desired in the market. All right, let's go on out to the next book here. And the next book is a very, very cool one. One of my personal favorites. This is Uncanny X-Men number 221, up 977 spots. And what is the significance of this? Well, this of course is the first appearance of Mr. Sinister. I believe this would, could actually be uh, denoted as the first full appearance because I do believe that he had a slight cameo in a previous book. Now, this is a book that came out in 1987, written by Chris Claremont and featured the first appearance of Mr. Sinister. Now, what do you got to say about Mr. Sinister other than he is one of the premier X-Men super vill villains? At least he is, in my opinion. A lot of people have been speculating that maybe we're going to get Mr. Sinister in the MCU up next. You know, we've already seen with the Fox franchise and the X-Men movies, we've seen, you know, Magneto done. We've seen Apocalypse done. We've seen other X-Men villains done like Juggernaut. Uh, we've seen the Hellfire Club, things like that. But we haven't seen Mr. Sinister. And even in the Fox franchise, franchise movie, uh, before they released the Logan uh, film, they did hint at the Essex Corporation, which was connected to Mr. Sinister. So it felt like, you know, maybe we were going to start to see Mr. Sinister uh, on the silver screen in some kind of way. Uh, but of course, now that, you know, the Fox franchise has been consumed by Marvel, uh, people don't know what's going to happen next with the X-Men. But Mr. Sinister makes a lot of sense as a character that would be, you know, the, the villain that they could roll out with uh, to start the X-Men. Because, you know, Mr. Sinister, he's got all those connections to genes and genetics. And, uh, you know, if we're going to be introducing the X-Men into the MCU in some kind of way, and we got to, you know, lay the foundation for, you know, the mutant gene, and we got to talk about, you know, how it was seeded by the Deviants and the and the Eternal or the Celestials and all that stuff, uh, it feels like Mr. Sinister might be a good way to kind of bridge that gap. Additionally, I like Mr. Sinister as well because he also has connections to the High Evolutionary. And if we're going to get the High Evolutionary uh, in Guardians of the Galaxy 3, that lay leaves another path uh, for 
for more connections to be built. And as we know, the MCU loves their connections. Additionally, Mr. Sinister, of course, has been being used in the Inferno storyline that's currently been going on. Uh, he's been popping up in a lot of the X titles. It's always, uh, you know, in the zeitgeist, I, I suppose I could say. I mean, I still believe at this point it's still undervalued, uh, but it is always being thought about. It's always being talked about and for good reason because it's just a great book. And as we dig into the numbers here, we'll see that there are 9.8 selling fair market value around the $600 range. And then down here at the bottom, of course, 1987, not going to see it slab. But typically when you go onto eBay now looking for this thing, you could find copies around that $70, $80, $90 range or so. All right, let's go on out to the next book here. The next book is a really interesting one, one that I feel like we got to talk about here. This is, of course, X-Force number 11, up 986 spots. And what is the significance of this? Well, as you can see here, it's the sixth appearance of Deadpool, but that's not really why we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about this because this is the first appearance of the real Domino, X-Force number 11, a book that came out in 1992, written by Fabian Nassiza and drawn by Rob Liefeld. Now, this is something that I think is really, really interesting. This idea of the first appearance of Domino because to me it feels like this book right here should technically be the first appearance of Domino, the real Domino that the market chases. Yet uh, this book has still kind of sat under the radar for a long time. I don't feel like this has ever been a really hot book. And I think one of the reasons for that is because, you know, we have the Domino appearance that happened in New Mutants uh, 98, which of course was the first appearance of Deadpool as well. But in that one, the Domino that made their first appearance was actually a, a character known as Copycat who was playing Domino. So we didn't get the real Domino until this one right here in X-Force number 11. Now, I actually did read this comic book as well, and it doesn't actually show the real Domino until the last panel on the last page. So you can even make the argument that this is the first appearance of the real Domino in cameo form. It's really interesting to think about how Domino's first appearance has been really muddied up in the market. It doesn't feel like there has been a book that has really like, you know, uh, uh, gone out in front of the other ones as like the go-to book for the Domino character. And you would have thought there, that there would have been one because because, you know, we actually did see Domino uh, in the Deadpool 2 movie. Now, this is really interesting because it feels like, you know, we're, we're definitely going to get Domino again, or excuse me, we're definitely going to get Deadpool again in the MCU. Uh, the question is, are we going to get another appearance of Domino? And if we do get that other appearance of Domino, uh, you know, what is the book that's going to be in the market that definitely takes off? But let me know what you guys think. I mean, what do you guys feel like is the money book for Domino? Should we value uh, this particular book here where we get the real appearance of of the character. It'll be interesting to see what the market dictates uh, later on in the future. But currently speaking, the market is dictating that this book sits at a 9.8 fair market value around the $110 range. And then of course, 92 book, not going to see it slabbed here. But you know, this is still, again, a very, very affordable book. When I go into eBay, you know, you can find copies of this thing sitting around that $14, $15, $20 range or so. Uh, not a bad price to pay, especially an eBay price uh, for what is quote unquote, the first appearance of, you know, a pretty notable character. All right, let's go on out to the next book here. And the next book is a very cool one. This is one that you guys are all very familiar with, I'm sure. This is Amazing Spider-Man number 362, new stand edition, up 987 spots. And what is the significance of this? Well, of course, this is the second full appearance of the character known as Carnage. Now, this is a book that came out in 1992, written by David Micheleni and drawn by Mark Bagley. And, you know, second appearance of Venom, uh, or excuse me, second appearance of Carnage, obviously extremely hot right now because because of the Venom 2 movie, we know that we got, you know, uh, Woody Harrelson playing the Carnage character. 361 has been an extremely hot book for a long time. Uh, but this has always felt like, you know, another group of trilogy books. You know, when we think about trilogy books, uh, we think about, you know, uh, first appearance of Silver Surfer, FF 48 through 50. We think about Wolverine, uh, Incredible Hulk 180 through 182. Well, I would like to kind of throw in there that ASM 361 through 363 was is kind Kind of like a trilogy of Carnage first appearance that I think is also, you know, a very, very cool uh, storyline as well. As you can see here, this is Carnage Part 2. Uh, there it says on the bottom of the, of the book right there. So this one is really cool. Very, very interesting. Uh, Carnage, again, one of the more popular villains there there is in, you know, not let alone, you know, the, the Spider-Man universe, or just Marvel universe in general. I feel like Carnage is one of the, you know, all-time most popular supervillains. And I think that this is a very, very cool book. Uh, you know, it's cool to see all three of these characters 
characters on the cover, you know, all together for the first time. Of course, 361, you see Spider-Man and Carnage there, but this is, you know, the first cover appearance of this particular trio. So very, very cool to see that here. A very cool book. Of course, this is the newsstand edition. Uh, in 19, 1992, the newsstand edition would actually definitely be uh, more rare as opposed to the direct edition counterpart. So definitely this is one that can command a little bit of a premium uh, because it is that newsstand edition. And as we dig into the numbers here, we'll see that there are 9.8 selling around the fair market value of $290. So pushing that $300 range. Of course, again, that's the newsstand edition. And then down here at the bottom, you know, you're not going to see it slab. Uh, but typically speaking, when I go into eBay looking for this thing in the newsstand edition uh, copy, you know, you can see this selling around that $60, $70 range or so. All right, let's go on out to the last book of the list. And this is the hottest book of the week. And that, of course, is Amazing Spider-Man number 316 up 992 spots. And what is the significance of this? Well, of course, you guys know this is the first full Venom cover. Uh, this is also the third appearance of Venom. And this is that classic book drawn by Todd McFarlane. Of course, this is also a book that was written by David Micheleni. Came out in 1989. And of course, just a classic, classic cover. Now, this is, of course, is a book that has gotten extremely hot uh, in the buildup in anticipation to Venom number two. I mean, one of the all-time great Venom covers, in my opinion. I love how dynamic it looks. I love the way that it's drawn. I mean, this is just like got, you know, nostalgia overload for me whenever I take a look at this book. Uh, but, you know, it's really interesting to me to think about like books like this because, you know, a lot of people talk about how like, you know, this is one of those books where it's like, oh, don't buy it now. Uh, it's too hot right now. It's only, you know, inflated because of the movie. It's And it's going to, it, you know, take a dip or it's going to, you know, fall off the cliff as soon as we're done with Venom number two. And yeah, that might be the case to some degree. I mean, you know, out of sight, out of mind, books definitely take dips. But I feel like this book right here is still a classic iconic cover that people are always going to want to own. I mean, even outside of the fact that we got, you know, Venom films, I mean, this has always been a book that, you know, has been has been noted as a key. I mean, like people still did pay, you know, premiums to get their hands on this book. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but like I, this is a book that I've never seen, you know, just kind of thrown in a dollar bin or, you know, in a back bin for $5. It's definitely still a book that people love to have and want to own. And I think it's still going to be that, that way, even after, you know, we get past this, you know, Venom 2 movie. Now, again, we're also going to get a Venom number three. So once we get to Venom number three, I'm sure that this book will heat up again. And, you know, on top of that, we all can assume that in Venom number three, we're probably going to get that Tom Hardy versus Tom Holland matchup. And when we get that, I mean, that's going to bring even more significance to this book because, you know, people are going to be, you know, saying, oh, this is the first cover appearance of the battle of Spider-Man and Venom. So, you know, this is another reason why this book will remain hot in the market. So a very, very cool book. I mean, it makes a lot of sense as to why, you know, so many sales are being done this week. Uh, you know, you could also look at it as like everyone feels like they want to unload uh, their ASM books, you know, because now that we have Venom, everybody wants to make those sales. So uh, no matter how you want to spin it, how you want to look at the data, I mean, this book is moving a lot. People want to buy it. People want to sell it. Uh, and of course, that's all because we have the Venom movie going on. And as we dig into the numbers, we'll see that there are 9.8s selling fair market value around that $1,200 range. And then of course, 1989 book, I'm going to see it slab at the low grade, but typically speaking, when you, when I go into eBay looking for raw copies of this thing, you'll see it being sold around that $200, $250 range or so. Well, that is all I have for this video. Those are the hottest comics for the week of September 30th. Uh, a lot of cool books on the list this week. You know, a lot of people wanting to sell those books that relate to Venom, of course. A lot of people always, you know, driving the market with those X titles. Uh, let me know what you guys think. What do you guys think about the uh, Domino cameo versus first appearance versus real Domino versus fake Domino? Uh, I'm very, very curious about that one. And I would love to be able to sort of track, you know, the values of those books. Uh, when and if we see Domino again in Deadpool number three in the the MCU. I'd love to see if there's a particular book that, you know, kind of peaks in the market. Anyways, drop me a like, comment, subscribe if you're enjoying the content, and I will see you in the next video.